everyone, this is Stacy with Quantum Artistic, and tonight we are doing a tutorial on my scrunching technique. I also call it a furring technique. Um, I'm going to post details on both my Patreon, which would be the super duper tutorial with the project ideas and the SVG that I created for you, um, as well as the, the general free version on my Facebook page. Um, or in my Facebook group page, I should say, I should, not in my artist page. Um, so basically what we're going to do is I had a question from a woman who asked how to do my furring technique. I don't have any examples here because all the artwork that I've used the furring with is sold. Um, but I, I will, I have posted some photos, reference photos. Suffice it to say, uh, it's, it's useful for a variety of things like hair, fur, fuzz, um, birds' nests, grass, lawns, gravel, anything you need a dense, chaotic, organic looking fill for. So we're going to go ahead and create some tonight and we're going to do it, the technique that I developed when I was doing my cheetah back in 2017. I'm sure there are other techniques. Um, I've been doing this my own way since 2017, so if you find a way that works better for you, then that's fine too. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to Erin at little circles because I usually I talk about quilt creations during my videos um, but Erin is really sweet and she sends these beautiful thank you packs whenever you order paper from her in this case it's like green ivory I don't know what the middle it's either dark blue or black a kind of a warm gray tone and a maroon so let's go ahead and tear the pack open and let's begin quarter inch paper you can do this technique with any paper whether it's eighth inch um, whether it's quarter inch three eighths inch you name it you just have to have a quilling tool that will accommodate that depth all right we're going to go ahead and just set that there just so you can stare at all the pretty colors and i'm gonna this is the new quilling tool that i got off amazon it's actually an extra deep slotted tool it will accommodate up to um, 10 millimeter deep paper so you see how much extra space I've got there. So I can use this with my three inch, three eighths inch paper. It's got a really sturdy head on it so I can really crank those quills and not worry about bending the tines. I like that. Uh, this was unplanned, but I also got the, these Sizzix um, tweezers and I really like them because they just seem like these ends don't bend nearly as easily as some of the other fine tips tweezers that I, that I get. So this is just a regular strip of paper. I'm going to go in, because it's got some kinks in it, see these kinks, I want to go ahead and just soften it so the curl is kind of the same throughout, and I want to get those little kinks out of it. I don't want to necessarily get it all super curled, I just want to make sure that it's uniform and that all the fibers are going the same direction. I don't want it to kind of bend up on me like that right there. All right, so my technique starts off as a beehive. I'm sure that if you've ever done uh, quilling, you're probably familiar with the beehive shape. Um, the beehive shape is just simply, I, I'll, I guess you're going to get two lessons tonight. You're going to get the beehive and my scrunchie. Um, also, please note that, and I'll try to link this too, there's another corresponding technique, which are my my um, crinkle poppies, which make a beautiful organic poppy shape or a, a type of flower, and it starts off with this as well. So let's go ahead and start. There's a couple ways you can do it. Um, you can either start right here at the very end, or you can move down, and I'm just going to go ahead and move down because I'm lazy, and I'll go ahead and bring this up here, and you just roll it forward a couple times. You step back, you roll it a couple times, you step back, and you roll it a couple times, step back and roll. What it does is make a wave-like chain. Step back by about a centimeter and a half and roll. The tighter you roll this, the closer you start, the smaller these little heads are. Um, and the smaller the head quilling tool, the tinier these are going to be. I'm just using standard, but feel free to experiment on how many spins you do for each of the coils, um, how, how far you, down you start here, and the size of your quilling tool. So I did this a few times, you know, like between five and eight or nine times, depending on how much material I want to work with. And then I cut it. And you end up with this 
it's like a, it's a wave shape and they're all connected. It's almost like crocheting, but with paper. It's pretty interesting. And there are variations on this too that I have discussed in other videos. And I may do it again in the near future um, since I'm trying to revamp my videos. So I just kind of compressed this into a, an area with my fingers that's you know roughly circular. And then I go smush. And I move my fingers and I smush again. And I move my fingers and I smush again. And the goal is to get all of the, the little fur pieces kind of going in different directions. I don't want them all kind of shaped the same. And I want all, whoopsie, I want the curve all gone too. I want it to be spiky and like that. And that is the basis. Let me zoom in here. That is the basis of my fur technique. Now, that's the way that you do it if you want to start out. I can also show you some of the ways you can do it that make it a little bit um, different. Let me go ahead and cue up a little area. I'm going to pretend that I'm filling in a section. I would recommend not doing more than 9 or 10 loops on this for the simple fact that it gets hard to manage all the paper. Just taking a piece of cards cardstock here a cardstock quarter inch strip and i'm going to make a shape um to fill in so supposing we've got a a creature that maybe we're doing a like a i don't know an animal that has a perfectly round or almost round body part it's so believable huh i'm just going to go ahead and grab some glue here I'm going to put the glue right here in the corner because I don't feel like getting a little dish to put it in. There we go. And just, I'm going to be kind of lazy and quick about this. I'm just going to dip this in like that. And then I'm going to um, just kind of make just a basic shape here. And I'm going to say, okay, well, we're going to do like a round creature, a round shape. We're going to... We're filling in uh, around like a like a bunny tail. Okay, this is pretend it's a bunny tail. I'm just gonna let this glue down and dry. I don't want it to move, so we're gonna give it a few seconds. Okay, it looks like it's dried enough for what we're gonna need to do. You can still see a little bit of glare of the glue there, but so anyways, you go ahead and you create your first section, and you just take it and you dip it in the glue like this. Make sure you get all the bottom coated. Don't go excessive because if you go too excessive, your paper may start to warp from all the from all the moisture. And you just stick it into the shape that you want it. And you kind of use your uh, tweezers or your fingers to compact it. Let me zoom in here so you can see better. See how it fills this area right there? So now we have more to fill. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make another batch here. I'm going to zoom back out. And we're just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That, that gives me eight loops. I'm going to go ahead and put it into a little area here. Squish, 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 squish. I'm going to squish it all up and scrunch it all up, make it look all uh, chaotic and organic. I don't want it all looking the same. I'm just going to grab, I'm going to kind of grab it like this to kind of hold it together a little bit. That didn't work very well, did it? <sighs> there we go. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here, tap it in the glue. And what you do is you go in here and you smush it against where you want it to go. And you just press in like that. Press and hold it. As long as you hold it for a few seconds, it fills on the area and it should glue down almost immediately. See how easy that is? Now, as you continue to fill, you may end up with a, with a place that's kind of like a gap. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fill this in. I'm going to... Um, get to the end and I'll fast forward it and, and I'm going to hopefully show you how to fill in areas that don't immediately get filled in. So let me go ahead and zoom back out.
I might also add that the force with which you scrunch determines how flattened out these go. If you just squeeze lightly, you may end up with, with um, a scrunch that has still a little bit of a circular shape. And that is, you know, totally cool because, it, you know, everything, everybody has different preferences and the spot that you're filling in may have a different need. So again, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to stuff this in. So I'm going to compact it up onto that side like that. Whoops. <gasps> That wouldn't happen normally, but I I didn't wait for this to dry entirely. So don't don't put too much force on it and let your stuff dry first, unlike me. Okay, now you see that you've got a little area in here that you need to fill in. And that can be, you know, daunting to some people. They're like, oh no, I've got to, how do I do that? Well, all you got to do is just do a really small chain of beehive and you fill it in. So you kind of have to guess. I'm going to guess that probably three to four chains will fit in here once it's compressed. If you're unsure, I would start with two. Um, you even can just do one chain. One chain squished makes like a little... Uh, sharp oval and you can just stick that down in holes that you ended up with so let me zoom back out i'm just going to make four turns so one two three four go ahead and do this snip it off and i'm just going to go ahead and kind of squish it you want to kind of be cognizant of the shape you want to fill in here. In this case, it's kind of like an, a J-ish or an L. So I'm just going to, I want to make it fit into that specific area. So I'm going to sh move this accordingly. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Um, go ahead and drag it through the glue. And then you can just come in here like this. And then you just stuff it into the space that it needs to be in. Look at that. Ta-da. Now you could also put a single one right in there and I'll show you how to do that. So just make a single beehive. It's just basically a couple twists. It makes just a single wave shape. I'm just going to kind of squeeze it into like a tear, oh, squeeze it into like a, a, a teardrop shape. We're going to go ahead and dip it in the glue and then I'm just going to stick it into the space that's open. Isn't that cool? Fills it in. So that's how to do your fur. It makes great grass, it makes great trees, it makes great shrubs, it makes great backgrounds like along like a landscape. It makes great hair, it makes great uh, bee bodies, insect bodies, anything, anything fuzzy, bird's nests, you name it. I hope that uh, that helped you out. And please watch the Crinkle Puppies tutorial as that is a, a like a, a, a complimentary um, technique that matches us very well. Um, and if you have any questions, put it in the comments. Thanks so much.